Good morning, everyone. In this class, we are going to do the poem "The School Boy" for class eight by William Blake. William Blake is the poet of this poem, right? So let's start today's session, looking at the brief biographical account of the poet William Blake. William Blake is known as a very very famous famous poet of English, painter and engraver of 18th and 19th 18th and 19th century. And this great poet of English was born on 28th. 28 November 1757 in London, right? And right from his childhood, William Blake had a great passion for writing poetry. Okay, he had a great love for literature, right? And he was married to Catherine Sophia. That's also very important, and that's what you all need to learn. If I tell you about all the important works of english literature that this great writer william blake is mainly known for he is very famous poet of english okay and he is mainly known for his uh, notable works like poetical sketches the song of innocence songs of experience the marriage of heaven and hell these are the very reputable works of literature by william blake and this great and prolific poet william blake okay breathed his last on 12 august 1827 in london okay and he was buried in burn hill fields burn hill fields in london okay so that's it for the poem introduction now we will look at the poem the school boy okay stanza wise first of all stanza 1 stanza 1 puri there in stanza 1 i love to rise in a summer morn i love to rise in a summer morn okay so here the poet is saying that he loves to rise in a summer morn here summer morn stands for summer morning that's what he loves to do what he loves to do he loves to get up early in the morning in summer sea when the birds sing on every tree next he says that in summer morning what happens okay birds are generally found sitting on the trees and singing in the early morning hours the distant hunts man wins his horn the distant hunts man wins his horn and the sky lark and the sky lark sings with me and the sky lark sings with me distant hunts man Here the huntsman refers to the people who come to the forest for hunting birds or animals. What do they do? Okay, they blow the trumpet-like musical instrument. Okay, that's what we call horn. That's what we call horn. That is a very old-fashioned musical instrument. It is just like in the shape of a horn. Okay. That we call in Hindi bhool. That's what here the poet is talking about. That he loves to get up early in the morning because he could hear the beautiful uh, musical sound of birds and the beautiful sound of the trumpet. Beautiful sound of the horn or trumpet. That's what we may say. Okay, being blown by the huntsman. And the sky lark sings with me. Oh, what sweet company! And he, the young boy in the poem, okay, who the poet is himself, he says that he thinks that, okay, he sees that the sky lark is there in the forest, and she is singing very beautifully, and the soft and the melodious sound of the sky lark, okay, is very very enchanting. Sky lark is a song bird that is yellow in color, okay, of what sweet company. Here the poet says that he loves to have the company of all these things. He loves to have the company of beautiful songbird, sky lark. He loves to have the company of melodious sound of trumpet and birds in the forest, in the garden. Okay. 
Now stanza two. But to go to school in a summer morn, oh, it drives all joy away. Okay. So in stanza one, we come across a very young young boy who is there in a poem, and he, what kind of a boy he is? He is the one who hasn't yet started uh, going to the school. He loves to stay at home. He loves to get up early in the morning. He loves to hear the melodious sound of birds, the singing of sky lark, and the sound of trumpet or horn. Okay, being blown by the handsman. Now in stanza two, okay, here the poet says that now all the happiness, all the delights of the young boy have been taken away. Why? Because now he has started going to the school. That is why he has to do away with all the enchanting, all the beautiful company of the skylark, company of the garden, forest, company of the beautiful summer morning and the birds singing, etc. Oh, it drives all joy away. Drives means it takes away all the joys, all the happiness, and the okay joys of that young kid. Because now what happens? He has to get up early in the morning and then get ready for the school. Under a cruel eye, outworn. What is the meaning of outworn? Outworn means okay, tired. Under a cruel eye, outdated. Outworn means outdated. The little ones spend the day in singing and display. Here the poet is talking about the atmosphere, the cruel atmosphere of the school. Okay. Now the young kid. He has to spend all his beautiful time, beautiful hours of the day under the cruel eye of his teacher. Because earlier initially what happens, there wasn't anybody to keep an eye on him, to check out of all his activities that what he has been doing. But now he is there in the school, and in the school what happens? His teacher is there all around every time. Okay, so he is there to keep an eye. On the activities of each and every student, so that's why he says that now all his happiness, all his delights are gone. The little ones spend the day. Little ones means the young kids, okay, young students in the classroom, young students in the school have to spend their day in singing and dancing. Sorry, in sighing and dancing. Sighing and dancing means dancing means in sadness, because now all the happiness and delights of the children have been taken away, have been snatched, okay. And now they have to spend their beautiful hours of the day under the cool eye of their teacher in the classroom in the school. Okay. So now, what about their beautiful day, beautiful days and hours of the day? Now they are spending their beautiful hours of the day in complete dismay, in total hopelessness, in total sadness. Okay. Now they are no longer. Happy, okay. Now they are no longer feel very much enchanted, okay, and fascinated. So that's it. We had in stanza one and stanza two, right? Thanks for watching this video and watch the next video for the next stanza number three, four.